as we are heading into different seasons, that is if you are not fortunate enough to be growing your orchids at the equator at sea level, I would like to share some thoughts of what I do with my orchids in preparation for the most challenging months of the year. And when I say the most challenging months of the year, that includes summer months if you are growing your orchids in the southern hemisphere, as well as winter for those of us in the northern hemisphere. For our hobby, these two seasons at their height are the most challenging, and these tips apply no matter which which side of the globe you are growing your beautiful orchids. As we do a little tour of what is going on on the patio here in southern Spain, welcome by the way, thank you for being here. It is clear to see that I grow my orchids in a hybrid indoor-outdoor environment. My winters are too cold for 70% of my collection, but when temperatures at night are warm enough, all my orchids are outside for the duration of those conditions. If you're growing your orchids indoors exclusively, then perhaps the first pointer I want to draw your attention to is light. The other factors may not apply to you because your orchids are in a controlled environment, which can include a designated greenhouse. But the light is changing, and that is something we all need to be aware of. Of course, once again, unless you are at the equator. But the rest of us have to be really aware of the angle of the sun once again, either it is rising or lowering in the sky, and with that spaces that once were bright shade now start to have partial direct sun. And that is going to increase or decrease depending on the location you find yourself in. If you had the chance to allow your orchids have direct winter sun exposure, be aware that the spring sun, while it still has the angle, is already stronger than the winter sun was. Same as the fall sun is still stronger than the winter sun will be. So orchids that were at one point in time safe where you had them need to be monitored so as not to burn them. If you have pulled back sheer curtains to allow for maximum winter sun, now would be the time to check if you need to put the sheer curtains back to protect your orchids. For those of us heading into fall, we need to be on guard about the angle of the sun encroaching on areas that for months now were bright shade and take necessary measures to avoid possible burn. For that reason, an interim shuffle may be necessary. Another thing I'm doing is working with the hormones of my orchids. For orchids that are continuous growers, I consider a time frame of six to eight weeks for hormones to activate and either take orchids into the resting phase or active growth phase. Remember the classification of continuous grower. Based on environment, they may not stop growing at all. But if you rely on what Mother Nature provides in way of climate and temperature, then it is time to look at your orchids and see who is normally in active growth during the winter months and prepare them in advance for what is needed. The same with spring just being around the corner for some. This way you're taking advantage of ideal conditions and the orchids should be stronger to cope with the stressors ahead. Again, that doesn't just include the winter stress but also the hot conditions that you may be headed towards. I work with a lot of calcium nitrate and CalMag as I'm watering my orchids. The fertilizer now is secondary. My focus is on getting new growths that are starting now and may stall during the winter to grow in the effort to avoid rot. There are no guarantees that everything I suggest here is going to be bubble wrap successful, but doing nothing in prep for the challenging conditions is not an option either, in my opinion. Again, let me emphasize, this applies to growers heading into spring and summer. Just because I'm in the northern hemisphere, I am also taking all these pointers when it comes to those of you moving into spring-summer. Your orchids are going to respond to the increased hours of daylight and hopefully explode into growth, and because of all these wonderful activities the orchids are starting to do or still are doing, they need support. Calcium nitrate and CalMag as the main nutrients will provide all orchids with what they need to grow as strong as possible. For growers heading into spring and summer, I would add a separate recommendation and that is if you can provide your orchids with silicon starting now, then they will be able to handle the stress of the heat so much better. It doesn't take much and I will link the corresponding video on silicon application in the description if you would like to have more more in-depth information on that. When it comes to preparing your orchids for whatever conditions you are headed into, consider what the fashion industry does with their seasonal collections being shown on the runways six 
six months before the season hits. That is what we need to be doing with our orchid care. But instead of six months ahead of time, six to eight weeks is our margin as the hormones take their time to mobilize. This is also super important to take into consideration if you are in an environment that goes by the rainy season followed by high humidity. You will avoid the threat of your new growths or just barely maturing growths from rotting out. We will address your humidity considerations in a moment because yes, that is something to keep an eye on as as well but if you would like to take a moment to give this video a thumbs up also subscribe to the channel that is something I would greatly appreciate thank you so so much also I do not want to confuse anyone that this video is about seasonal orchid care as per our four seasons that is a completely different topic and I will link that video on seasonal orchid care in the description as well it is a great resource to seeing what orchids do and how to respond either ahead of time if you know your orchid or if you're getting new orchids into the collection. So check that video out as well. It kind of expands in more depth on what to do with orchids when not based on our four seasons. And now there's something, something you may notice is your orchids are drying out faster or taking longer to dry out. During this interim period, watch your watering schedule. For some of us, it's going to slow down gradually with watering. And for some of us, you will be surprised to find a pot bone dry all of a sudden in desperate need of water. During the winter months, often there is a lull in the watering frequency and we can get caught off guard as spring arrives and vice versa. The watering frequency reduces Suddenly, some of us are wanting to water orchids as per usual, but the pots are still damp. And for what that is worth, at least you are aware as to how much water or nutrient solution you need to prepare without having too much left over or mid-watering you have run out and find yourself having to prepare another batch. If you grow your orchids outdoors, temperature permitting, now is the time to check your night temperatures if you're heading into fall. Some nights will be absolutely fine, but there will be dips in the night temperatures here and there, which could pose a problem. Our warm to hot growing orchids should be protected from temperature is lower than 18 degrees Celsius. That is my recommended cutoff line. But if you know your collection, your outdoor hot pockets where residual heat of the day keeps the temperatures within reason, then you may get away with the occasional lower night temperatures and leave your orchids outside. But really keep an eye on how it still warms up during the day and how it can balance out the chances of a cooler night. Just because some nights may dip below the comfort zone, we are not ready to bring our orchids inside for a single night or two nights in a row. And the reverse applies for you in the Southern Hemisphere. It is tempting to get the orchids outside, but be careful with what is considered a warm day. It takes a while for the patio or porch to absorb residual heat to buffer against the occasional cooler nights. So don't be fooled by nice warm days. Your surroundings are not yet warm enough at night to release residual warmth. And this is where you also need to keep an eye on your humidity levels. As temperatures drop, humidity may rise and vice versa. Humidity has a cooling side effect. That could pose a threat as temperatures drop as well. This can affect the slow drying out of your pots as well. You may want to consider holding off on watering and opt for a brief mist instead. All in all, shuffling orchids can be a good thing, this time of year especially because we can check for pests, which is something we should do all year round. But, you know, now some of us are going to handle our orchids more often. At the same time, we can check for pests, but it can get really old if we are doing it every day and every night. And then sometimes it's just not necessary and then we're back to shuffling again, etc., etc. And then we also sometimes worry we may have misjudged outdoor conditions just because we were too eager to get the orchids outside. Trust me, I shuffle my orchids every day during the winter and to have misjudged one night is so frustrating. So try to be on the safe side. Try to guard against temperature fluctuations, humidity influences that will then apply and get your orchids ready for whatever season you are headed into so that everything that you're working towards will bloom when they should. I hope that this was helpful, that it gave you a reminder of what to look out for. Sometimes I get so caught up in my routine, I forget some details, especially the angle of the sun while the temperatures are still warm. If I help bring your attention to something that will help your orchids, no matter the season you're heading in, then that makes me happy. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed seeing what's going on on the patio, where my focus is, especially seeing buds forming. 
watch the space for the blooms. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I appreciate your time and support. Have yourself the most beautiful of days on the condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.